We all know that the world is over overpopulated and our ecological footprint exceeds the Earth's biocapacity by at least 75%, which means that we are living off 1.75 Earths. Our global population has grown from 2.5 billion in the 1950s to about 8 billion now and expected to increase to 9.7 billion by the time 2050 comes, which is very near now, round the corner, I would say. And meeting the needs and demands of this growing population has accelerated the loss of biodiversity loss. The 8 billion human population that we, we know it very well are sustained by the myriad benefits that is provided by our biodiversity, whether it is in the form of forests, species, rivers, oceans, wetlands, and you name it. And in the, the services and the goods that they provide in terms of clean water, the climate resilience to climate change, and the goods, in the, you know, the food, the medicines, and so on and so forth. At the same time, some of the poorest and the most marginalized communities of the world actually depend on nature's contributions to people for their day-to-day -day survival and for their livelihoods. So fundamental to a healthy social and economic system is a resilient and healthy natural ecosystem which is sustained by a thriving biodiversity. However, the condition of the biodiversity, as we know, is not that good. And some of the previous speakers have also mentioned about it. We have lost, or are, uh, since the last 50 years, we've probably lost 69% of the species globally. While a lot of scientific studies and documents have documented the loss of species across these ecosystems, the most rapid decline has been in the case of freshwater species. Now that is something which is extremely, extremely dangerous for us. So that is extremely dangerous to us because the decline in these species indicates the decline in these ecosystems. And we know how crucial fresh water is for our survival. Accounting for only 0.1% of the Earth's surface water, imagine 0.01% of the surface water, and covering only 1% of the Earth's geographical area, the fresh water actually sustains and harbors 10% of all recorded global species and, and we know the history, civilizations, Indus Valley, the Chinese civilization, the Egyptian civilizations have always developed and thrived around rivers. And in fact, more than 50% of the world's population even today lives near to these ecosystems, the, the freshwater ecosystems. And Therefore, it is extremely important to sustain these ecosystems. And the species that are found here are indicators of the health of these systems. And for many humans, I mean for most people around the world, river flows are linked to livelihoods, identity, sense of space, their religious beliefs, their cultures, languages, etc. And several ceremonies of their lives. And in fact, I read yesterday in the UK State of River report that the race to climate resilience will be won or lost on rivers. And right now, we are losing. I unquote, but I do not believe that we are losing. We will neither lose, we will actually, and we cannot afford to lose. So we will win this war. And with that, I come to our very own river, our Ganga River, which flows, originates from the Gangotri Glacier in the Himalayas and passing through three biogeographic zones of the country, the Western Himalaya, the Gangetic Plains, and the uh, coasts merges with the ocean at uh, West Bengal. As it forms, it connects people, places, and other forms of life, inspiring and sustaining life, both within it and around it, just like a woman. Somebody spoke of a woman, and this thought came to my mind that this is my river. You know, with all its glory flowing, taking whatever come in its ways, it 
keeps on flowing it on its path never stops whatever may happen you can give anything to it it will just amalgamate and keep walking and this ganga basin is one of the most densely populated regions of the world 950 individuals per square kilometer and actually going up to over 1400 people per square kilometer in the deltaic regions it constitutes 26% of india's land mass and supports 43% of the population of the country it generates more than 40% of the gdp of the country it harbors 30% of our water resources and 47% of the country's irrigated area there are 54 class 1 cities and 30 class 2 towns and several th hundreds in fact thousands of villages within 10 km boundary on either side water abstraction for irrigation dams etc are the critical factors which affect the integrity of this and its uh, tributaries and in fact 70% of the bhagirathi and 48% of the alaknanda river are affected by inundation and diversion of water due to dams almost 87% of the water is diverted by the time it reaches the bhim goda barrage so if we think that we are getting a lot of ganga jal from haridwar think again right and of course rest is abstracted as it moves on and different resource use scenarios by different stakeholders have resulted in varied impacts and threats along the length of the river as you are aware we are talking about the national uh, waterway one so all and and historically also the rivers has been the routes to critical trades right from the mauryan empire itself in recorded history but all is not so gloomy the ganga along with the brahmaputra forms one of the largest and most diverse river basins of the world spanning 10 biomes this basin has 165 protected areas which include 120 wildlife sanctuaries 20 national park 29 national parks and 16 tiger reserves covering 30% of the tiger reserves of the country it the river itself flows through six protected areas right at our backyard the rajaji tiger reserve it flows right through that and so many others three national parks and three wildlife sanctuaries in fact the only dolphin sanctuary in the country and probably in the world is on the ganga river in bihar the vikramshila dolphin sanctuary this river harbors five species of mammals 307 species of migratory birds, 3 crocodilian species, 15 species of turtles, 19 amphibian species as well as around 200 fish species. Among the mammals, we have our national aquatic animal, the Gangetic River dolphin, and another species, the the marine dolphin or the Irrawaddy dolphin which is found towards the ocean. The dolphin is a top predator which influences the food chain and plays a very critical role in maintaining the ecological processes. Among the crocodilian species, we have the representative of the Indian subcontinent the gharial. You must have seen the gharial there will be a picture here also with a picture on the male male snout and that's why it's known as a gharial and it is one of a priority species under evolutionary distinct and globally endangered species found only in the indian subcontinent and uh, apart from that these migratory birds maintain uh, the other you know organisms control pests and help in pollination services the turtles are the scavengers of the system cleaning up the system as they eat all the dirt in the river bin vetan ke karmachari as we call them you know that's how they are working in cleaning our rivers and the amphibians which represent their response indicates the climate they are the best indicators of climate change or change in the water quality of any system and extremely important the ecosystem stress if anything is happening it is these amphibians who will tell you and these spill uh, the fish species you know some of the uh, can you name some of the iconic species of fish found in the ganga like the golden mahashir the hilsha you know these are some of the fish which are connected to the people's lives and livelihoods to their cultures to their religions and so on all these are found in this very river in our own ganga 
and these are the indicators as well as the factors that contribute to the healthy river ecosystem. However, this biodiversity in the Ganga is in peril due to the, you know, the whole pressures, the whole act, range of anthropogenic activities, you know, the pollution, the sewage, the development which is taking place. So the question is how to conserve freshwater ecosystems in these densely populated areas where majority of the population is below the poverty line and is highly dependent on the river ecosystem. That is how to sustain conservation in crowded spaces. And there comes our role and our work. So the earlier efforts by the government of India to clean the Ganga, you must have heard many times, clean Ganga effort is going on. Largely focused on engineering efforts. But with the establishment of the National Mission for Clean Ganga, they started focusing on the software. They realized that if the Ganga has to be clean and sustainable, then you need to ensure that the aquatic life within the Ganga survives and the human life around the river thrives. That is extremely important to sustain any ecosystem. And that is how our own work on Ganga biodiversity conservation started, which uses cutting edge scientific methods as well as grassroots level interactions with local communities and other stakeholders along the principle of Jan Bhagidari. And from this we have derived replicable models of development and an integrated science policy and society interface for conservation of rivers and wetlands in the country. We have established a river research center at the Wildlife Institute of India, the only one of its kind in the country and I think probably in the world which totally focuses on river biodiversity conservation. It promotes the restoration of biodiversity in the Ganga River by involving multiple stakeholders and it has a state of art labs and facilities for any kind of decision support system to the various agencies of the government whenever these are required. The first of its kind ecological survey, everybody had worked on the Ganga when we started working. Somebody had done PhDs, some universities had done some studies, but nobody had seen the Ganga as a single entity, as a single ecosystem from Gangotri to Ganga Sagar. And we conducted several such surveys. My own team of young researchers braved all odds to do, do these surveys by foot, by boat, and we were able to do six such surveys. And what we found to our pleasure and surprise that contrary to the belief that Ganga is dirty, that it is polluted, we found a thriving wildlife in the Ganga. And we realized there's huge potential and the power, like a woman, this river holds. That it has nurtured, it has protected its life within. And there, then it actually has, you know, motivated and doubled the efforts to conserve the biodiversity of the river. We found the priority species distributed, uh, uh, we identified six zones in all the five states through which the Ganga goes, that where the wildlife was breeding, thriving, people were sighting it. And we really wanted to focus our restoration attempts along these areas through conservation efforts focused here. And conservation, what is conservation? Somebody spoke about conservation. In the definition of conservation is wise use of resources. So the moment the word use comes, there is an anthropogenic connotation. People become central to it. Conservation is what people do, what decision the states make, that is conservation. And that is why our first effort was to build capacities of the primary stakeholders, the local communities who are coming in contact with this aquatic life every day. The fishermen in whose nets these wildlife is getting entangled. The people who live on the bank of the Ganga who, are, who can stop or throw all the rubbish into the river. The veterinarians, you know, in India, wildlife health is an underdeveloped field. And, prop, and particularly in the field of aquatic wildlife. So this is where our efforts came in. The state forest departments, working closely with them, we were able to develop a very robust program of capacity building. 
and again and again as i said that the communities who live along the ganga they have a critical role to play and that is why we established a program known as the ganga prahari program and everybody along the river who wanted to be uh, wanted to contribute to river conservation got a platform from which they could actually contribute to, to the well being of this river and these ganga praharis are now and you can actually google it and there is a lot of information about this it's a trained and motivated cadre of local people boys girls women men you know from all professions from all economic and social background but at the forefront of river conservation working proactively for the conservation of rivers and its biodiversity as i speak here my 3500 ganga prairies are working working voluntarily to conserve and protect the biodiversity of this river thank you and then we also realize that conservation voluntarism cannot happen on an empty stomach you know we need proper uh, contrary to the proper cliche we need to grow money on trees that is when conservation will happen and that is why we started working on livelihood interventions with these local communities and we were able to establish these micro units known as jalaj so jalaj is a synonym for lotus which has its root in water and it can grow in any kind of water but when it blooms a beautiful flower emerges which spreads happiness and health all around it and so our jalaj models and now we've been given the responsibility of establishing 75 of them in the entire ganga basin so this jalaj has emerged as an integ in very important vertical for ganga conservation and also to realize the dream of arth ganga set up by the government of india and the niti aayog so what we found we found that the populations of priority species were mostly restricted to the relatively undisturbed areas that is the protected areas along the ganga river which account for around 10% of the total length of the river then some of the species that had not been reported from the river for many many years for example one species of snake known as the sea bold snake or certain species of bird which were not reported from certain areas actually we started seeing them lot of efforts by the government in terms of creation of sewage treatment plants very seriously you know taking up the task of conserving the ganga river creating a jan ganga or a jan andolan actually have contributed to all these efforts we also found that the government's policies and acts are extremely important to ensure conservation of species and ecosystems and most important is the declaration of these safe havens the protected areas for conservation of species then establishment of rescue and rehabilitation centers where any kind of species which are in trouble can actually be taken just like hospitals and can be rehabilitated and actually be released back into their you know uh, habitats is extremely important and with help from the state forest departments of all the five states we have been able to establish these rescue and rehabilitation centers at uh, very critical locations along the ganga river so some of the lessons that we have learned communities are critical to conservation engage people who live around such ecosystems and women are central to such efforts then role of the state is critical the ganga prairie initiative whose goal is to build a nature positive society that conserves and protects the rivers and the biodiversity it harbors for the well being of society as a whole so it is the ownership in each one of us i identify myself as a ganga prairie if you see my social media whatever little i know of it and i handle it is all about me being identified as a ganga prairie or any all of us are prairies of ganga doesn't mean that river which flows from gangotri to ganga sagar it is any river it is any small stream it is any small wetland where you can protect and conserve fresh water so become a prairie very important own it then 
conservation has to make economic sense to the people as i said conservation doesn't happen on empty stomachs so careers in conservation at all levels and it gives me immense pride when i see my ganga prairies how they have bloomed and emerged and as individuals once they came into this program and while economics is important platforms investment in human capital in terms of building people's capacities awareness you know giving them uh, uh, any kind of skill sets recognition are the key to develop conservation leadership at the grassroots levels and this conservation leadership at the grassroots levels is what is going to sustain this planet everybody's role is important but the grassroots is extremely important and this kind of leadership will induce behavioral change create mechanism to address entitlement issues and finally will lead to to an enhancement of the productivity of the ecosystems solutions for the community should come from people within the community that will only lead to development of communities resilience and finally to create waves of conservation at the larger landscape we need to create ripples at the micro level very important and now i will come to the beginning of my talk when i said an economist talking about wildlife conservation working as a professor at the wildlife institute of india i am very proud of my institute and my work there but what it has taught me and what my work in conservation has taught me is that interconnectedness is extremely important interconnectedness across disciplines interconnectedness across sectors interconnectedness among societies interconnectedness amongst economies and finally interconnectedness in our all minds and a common goal to save this planet and the beautiful biodiversity that it maintains and which actually sustains all of us thank you all thank you for this opportunity